Well, good afternoon, fam. It's a Sunday afternoon. I'm at the yard. And uh, we're getting ready to head out. We're going down to Miami. But I have a 9 o'clock appointment, appointment tomorrow morning, Monday morning. So it's, we're going to go down to the Martin County rest area and uh, go to bed. That way I can get up at like 5 or 6 in the morning and then head down about another 75 miles down to where I'm going. So I got the truck ready to go. I don't like leaving on Sundays, but sometimes you just have to. Got the truck ready to go. Got the uh, pickup tucked in right there. So getting ready to head on down to uh, to this rest area. Probably stop at the Loves down at the 223 just to goof off a little bit, and then uh, head all the way down. It's a nice rest area. Nice Sunday afternoon drive. Uh, everything ought to go. Pretty good. So I'll check in with you guys on down the road. Here we go. Well, good morning, fam. How's everybody doing? Well, I'm about to get the day started. It's Monday morning. <clears throat> Boy, y'all, look at that sunrise about to happen down there. So I'm at a rest stop on I-95, about 100 miles north of Miami. It's the last one that you can really get into before you get to Miami. And uh, it was full last night in here, y'all. But uh, man, the weather is beautiful. Uh, got the truck going, getting ready to uh, get on down the road and uh, uh, get this delivery off. Then I got to climb out of Florida. Ooh. It's a long dead here today, y'all. But you know, I knew it when I took the load. Good paying load, so uh, it'll work out all right. Um, place I'm going to is probably pretty congested, and I'm pretty sure I'll deal with some uh, some Miami traffic, but. That's just part of it, you know, that's just part of it. You try to time it just right, but I'm going to get on the road. I'm really going to enjoy this sunrise this morning and uh, head on down to Miami. So, hey, it's the first day of the week, y'all. That means you got to wake up and say, I'm about to have a great week. And don't let anything jump in the way of you having a great week. And I'm going to have a great week. And if you have things like breakdowns and obstacles, that's just an opportunity to get up and do it again and do it better and know how to get around that. So, all right, fam, I'm about to get in this truck, start heading south, uh, enjoy the traffic. I'm looking for in the traffic. Now, so you can look at traffic two ways. I'm going to look for some old school cars today when I get stuck in that traffic. Here we go. Well, fam, you can see we're at the rest area. Got about 100 miles to go. Says I'll get there in an hour and 41 minutes. I got a nine o'clock appointment. So things ought to go pretty well this morning. Got a full 11 hours of drive time, eight hours till break. All right, let's get this show on the road, y'all. to Miami um, about one and a half miles from my customer and got a little fender bender whatchamacallit thingamajig going on up here I don't know if you can see that guy in a motorcycle just weaving in and out I'll tell you what it just cracks me up but uh anyway uh, we'll get around this stoplight down there I don't know if y'all can see it on the video but that's where I'll be uh turning, making a right turn. It looks like they got two lanes blocked here. Yep, there's two lanes blocked. So this will be interesting to see if they let the semi get over. white car over there 
Boy, that's that little skinny lane I gotta turn into. I tell you what, I'm just gonna wait here for the uh, turn signal light, whatever you call it up there. Uh, this is one of those situations where you can't rush. You, uh, you gotta just sit here and be patient because this truck is 65 feet long, y'all. And I gotta get in that little bitty, <laughs> little one skinny little lane over there. Gotta go out, hook it hard, you know. So I call that the Samansky swing. That was my trainer. He taught me how to do what's called a butt hook. That's what I'm about to do. Cause this traffic over here is not gonna let up, fam. fam I've been down here before but uh I don't think I've ever been to this place called Blue Link so let me walk over here see what I can come up with I'll be right back in touch well fam I'm here at the place and uh so I got to get the truck up in this area right here and right now the truck is right there so I got some finagling to do y'all I'm gonna back up, but I gotta get back on the street because there's all these big old potholes right behind me. If you look at the back of the trailer, I'm already in a real deep pothole. So you can see the back tires on the trailer way down in the water. So we'll make this work. Gotta do what we gotta do. Gotta get in this gate right here. Then I came from nothing, I can't stop. I came from nothing, I came from nothing. Nipsey hustle prolific, always knew I was gifted. Pumping midnight marauders, but serving biscuits for tips. And I hated having employment. Started rapping in cafes, and they would call me a poet. They tried to call me the savior, tried to call me the one. I called me the son, asking for help. So I got the uh, trailer ready to go. I'm about to walk around here now and ask these guys if they're ready to come on out here and unload. Uh, Shouldn't take them. And I got money falling off my phone, y'all. I can't get that quarter up, y'all. I'm sorry. I'm cheap. Cheap. But anyway, see, we're ready to go. And uh, here comes the forklift driver now. So I'm going to walk in here and uh, see if they're ready for me. Real nice guy there. So I'm in the warehouse. So I'm going to go back outside here and... Uh, Get ready to get unloaded. His English wasn't that good and my Spanish isn't that good, but we got it together, I think. So here we go. You notice I left the plastic on. And the reason I leave the plastic on is because I don't want any raindrops to get on it. Now, when you look up at the sky, it looks pretty good. I don't think we're going to have any problems. See the truck behind me there. He's also getting ready to get unloaded, so I'm just gonna wait here and, uh, till they uh, come around. Plastic, taking that plastic off is the last thing I want. I don't think it's gonna rain or anything, but I just like to be, you know, like to be safe because I don't want to pay for this load. I've already got one wet spot on it. I don't think it's gonna matter, but matter of fact, I'm positive it won't now because it's already drying out. Got the plastic off, now I just gotta wait on the forklift to show up, get unloaded, and head on back up to Jacksonville. What an awesome, smooth day this has been. <laughs> hey fam, I just wanna take a minute and shamelessly plug this Harbor Freight product. A lot of people say some bad things about Harbor Freight. Harbor Freight does have some junk, but I'm gonna tell you, I have had this drill, which is what I use to roll up my straps. And I've had this drill for three years now. This drill right here, and it has not failed me. Battery lasts easily three weeks, uh, plenty of power, and you can see right now, it's a little bit beat up. Um, sometimes I'll say Harbor Freight tools are okay because you just use them every now and then, but I'm gonna put it like this. First off, I'm not being paid for this. I just think it's a great value, and I use it every day. Um, and I, and it's it, every day, consistently, sometimes twice a day, so. Something just to think about. I don't even know if they carry this brand anymore. It's Bauer, B-A-U-R, 20 volts, lithium. Uh, 
Great job, Howard Freight. Got to give you props on that one. take me about five hours and nine minutes, uh, 342 miles, and I got almost a full clock, so I get to get out here and just relax. So my highlight is getting to exit 223, which is where I'm going to stop and get some Boston baked beans. Something good in everything, y'all. Something good in everything. There's a whole bunch of trucks coming. I can tell you that right now. I don't want to clip this fire hydrant. I gotta get out of here, y'all. This is tight. Now I'm coming up to this stoplight. And you can see the white line there, but I'm gonna stop back a little bit because see this truck right here turning in so well he's not turning actually but I just want to make sure that I leave these guys enough room to make that turn like they did when I came in here so I'm gonna stop back a little bit wait on the light to change and head on up north Good morning, fam. Tuesday morning. Getting a late start today. Had a few things to take care of at the house. But it is a beautiful day, so uh, I'm over here at the yard. I'm running up to Fitzgerald today to uh, uh, get a load and uh, just bring it back. So I'll be back pretty early today, actually. It's kind of a short day, but boy, I'll be bumping it tomorrow, I'll tell you that much. So. Uh, the truck is right there and the spot that I park it in is right there and then now got y'all dizzy yet I got to put the pickup truck in uh, In that spot, so uh, I'll check in with you guys on the way up. Ooh, that sun kicking ain't it? I'll check in with you guys on the way up um, One of my favorite drives up to Fitzgerald back roads all the way We're gonna count some farmhouses today y'all and we're gonna appreciate the fact that I get to ride by them So I'll catch up with y'all in a little bit You know, fam, it's kind of a pain in the butt because where I park the truck, I have to move it out and then back the pickup in there. It's silly, just kind of a pain in the butt, but old school here, you know, y'all. Well, fam, made it to uh, West Fraser up in Fitzgerald, Georgia. Oh man, I am ready to stand up, y'all. Hey fam, up here in Fitzgerald, Georgia. A uh, little bit of a line over there. Looks like, actually, it looks like it might only be one truck in line, so uh, hopefully he'll move out the way and I can get on up in line. I'll probably be next in line and I'll head on back to Jacksonville with this, uh, with this load of lumber. You can see that blue truck right there. You look out there, you see the guy in the yellow vest coming this way, so he'll probably move his truck up sure he was over there socializing it's what I usually do when I get here and uh, the staging area is down there behind it, where we get loaded <laughs> I did 
did is throw one strap across each lift. I do want to check my weight. I think I'm going to be all right. It's loaded out at 50,000, which I can only haul 48. But they took two packs off, so uh, I'm sure I'll be all right with this. But I'm going to go out front uh, and get the tarps on. It's, it's not even hardly raining now, but I just wanted to be on the safe side. So I went ahead and just uh, threw a couple straps. Had them put the tarps up on top. Hit the scale. And hopefully everything will be okie dokie. Scale, scaled out at 73,800, well below 80,000, so I'll be in good shape for the uh, drive down to uh, Auburndale. See another driver, he's got his tarps and everything done, so he was pretty quick too, he just left out back. So I'm going to have to go down here and tarp in the mud, that's the bad thing, but it is what it is. Pam, you can see where trucks tarp on both sides of the road here. And it's pretty muddy, especially over there on the left, which is where we usually stop. So I'm going to go on down to Miss Glenda's. Now, some people might say that I'm going to Miss Glenda's for her cooking. And I just want to make sure Miss Glenda makes enough money. I feel it is my civic responsibility to make sure that Miss Glenda makes enough money. She cooks this home cooked food, puts it in those, you know, trays at, in the back of the gas station. Uh, I don't want Miss Glenda to go hungry. So it's not that I want to go there. I'm just looking out for Miss Glenda. And Miss Glenda makes some beans and franks down there that is so delicious. I, I mean, I'm going to help her, you understand? I'm not going for my own well-being. I'm going to help Miss Glenda. It's just the kind of guy that I am, you understand? I do nice things like that for people. And I wouldn't want Miss Glenda left be, you know, to be left out. You understand? Diabetes in a cup. Whee! Here we go. Well, fam, we're at the stop and go out here on uh, Highway 319 right outside of Fitzgerald, Georgia. Just a little bitty hole in the wall that has some real good cooking in here. Well, come on, let's go inside and check it out. Yeah, I'm taking him down. Good morning, fam. It's uh, 
Wednesday morning. So, a little before six o'clock, getting ready to head down to Auburndale to the furniture. I say the furniture place, the uh, uh, lumber place, United Forest Products. Over here at the yard, got the truck parked uh, in the back there. Just doing another walk around, making sure that uh, everything's ready to go on the truck. Look what I left on the back of the truck like an idiot, y'all. Boy, that's just unacceptable. But, uh, everything's looking good. Finished my pre-trip. So I'm about to get on down the road. You know you guys can't even see me back here, huh? Why? Wow. It's good and dark right there, isn't it? But, uh, I'll tell you what, though. It's nice and cool outside. So, about to get on the road and head on down. I'm kind of stalling because there's a train passing. And, uh, no need to be going over to uh, Edgewood. But all I'm going to do is wait on the train to pass. So, I hope you guys are having a wonderful day. Whenever, whenever time you watch this, uh, just make sure you think positive thoughts. Keep your mind on positive things. And, and y'all, don't, 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 don't cave into the naysayers. You always got somebody that knows more about what you're trying to do and they've never even been through. So, chin up. I'm about to get on down this road. Hey fam, I made it down to Auburndale. I'm at this place called uh, United Forest Products. And I uh, just wanted, so I got the truck ready. I can't talk y'all. I got the truck uh, ready to get unloaded. You can see he's unloading the truck right now. I'm just walking around waiting on my breakfast to warm up. I got my little Ozark container right here full of Dr. Pepper Zero because I'm trying to do right y'all. But uh, that stuff tastes pretty good actually. <laughs> but uh, they're getting the truck unloaded and I should have me out of here in about 10, you know, 15 minutes, something like that. Uh, which is fine, we got about four more lifts left on the truck. Uh, this place is hopping, y'all. I mean, it is hopping. They make trusses for roofs here. Um, and they've got the coolest looking assembly line or assembly clamp. You can kind of see it right there behind me. You probably won't be able to see all the little conveyor belts and everything, but uh, man, they get after it over there. And uh, I was watching them, they, they take a load of the lumber, like what I have on the truck here. You see that lumber right there? They take that lumber and they put it on one of these conveyor belts, like right in that area, right, right over there. And then they, uh, they hammer it all together. So uh, it's a pretty cool system that they got going here. You know, I'm kind of nerdy and I to know what all that is about. So, anyway, I'm about to jump up in here and eat my breakfast. And then uh, head on back up, hopefully the black chair today. So. I'll let y'all know a little bit where I'm headed. Well fam, done down here in Auburndale. I wish I could go over and see what they're really doing in that plant over there. They got so much going on over there. I, I really wish I could understand what all they do. Now here's a great situation for me to be in. Hold on. I gotta make this turn right here, but see that truck sticking out right there? Man, I tell you, people need to understand that we cannot turn these trucks on the dime. So, I'm gonna give it a try. See if I can make it around that guy. I think I'm all right. Not even sure y'all saw that. Hey fam. Well, headed up to Savannah. About to drive into a real bad rainstorm. Sometimes these storms in Florida, but I'll tell you what, it's like driving into a wall. You're driving along and then the next thing you know, it's just pouring down rain. I'm sure it's not just Florida, but I'm headed to Bloomingdale to pick up a load of lumber. Uh, take that down to Fort Pierce and I'll 
try to get back up and get another load. Anyway, I want to check in with y'all. I'm going to jump off this phone, drive in this rain, and we'll talk to you in a little while. Hey fam, Wednesday night, came up to uh, Bloomingdale, I'm actually right south of Savannah at a, a TA truck stop, I'm sure y'all can see all that in the background. Uh, we're going to spend the night here, the, uh, my uh, pickup is only 26 miles away, then I got a 350 mile run down south, and then a 220 mile back up, it's going to be a long day tomorrow, I'm not sure I'm going to make it the whole way, but uh, I might. But I'm walking across the street to get some wings because this uh, truck stop we're at, the uh, uh, restaurant's going to burn down with Popeyes and a Fud Rucker. So I got to walk across the street. No big deal. I need to exercise anyway. So, anyway, I will catch up with you folks in the morning. Well, good morning, fam. It's Thursday morning. I'm up here in Bloomingdale. I'm in line uh, to get loaded. Uh, there's only one truck ahead of me at this point. But, uh, and they're moving pretty quick. But guess what, fam? It is 64 degrees out here, and I could not ask for a better day. So I am getting ready to uh, get the trailer ready. I've got to get the, uh, the tarps off, get the straps down on the other side, and uh, then I'll be ready to go ahead and get loaded. You see the generator down here? I ran out of gas last night, y'all. I didn't even need the AC on when I woke up. I wonder if I was sleeping so good because there was no noise. So um, I'm getting ready to get this trailer ready to go. And uh, uh, can't think of what I was saying. Get the trailer ready to go so I can move on up uh, in line. So uh, I hope everybody out there is having a great day. And just remember, what you think is what you do. So stay positive, fam. Here we go. All right, fam. It is uh, still Thursday, obviously, and uh, I am, I got the, the load tarp, and I'm getting ready to head to, uh, where am I going? Fort Pierce, Florida. Man, it is beautiful out here. I bet it's about 68, 69 degrees. I got to get some new tarps. Out. My tarps are so raggedy that it's not even funny. But uh, we got another truck just pulled in right back there. He's getting ready to, I guess, tarp his load, even though he's got covers on it. Those covers are $5 a piece, so I just start to sweat a little bit, y'all. Uh, should be a nice ride down to Fort Pierce, about 300. I think it's 350 miles here. I'll show y'all in just a second. So, jump in the cab, got my breakfast in the microwave. Get ready, hit the road, y'all. All right, y'all, I was wrong. At 362 miles to get to Fort Pierce. Should get there about 3.20 p.m. And then I'm going to head back up to Jacksonville after that. This ride is going to take me straight down 95 through Jacksonville. My goal is to get down to Fort Pierce, which is uh, right here, and then go back up to Jacksonville, which is right there. That is uh, quite a jump today. As you can see, what is about 592 miles. But I got a uh, full clock. I got 10 hours and 28 minutes of drive time. Uh, 1027 now and that's what I've got left on the shift too uh, but if we look over here my arrival is at 6 47 p.m. which is eight hours and 42 minutes away so it's gonna take me eight hours and 42 minutes just to drive time but I got 10 hours and 27 minutes so it's gonna be tight because I got to get unloaded down there so we'll see what happens I might be at a truck stop right south of Jacksonville which is okay that's just how it works out sometime you know I'd love to get back home tonight but We'll see how quickly they get me unloaded down south and uh, go from there. Here we go. Well, hey fam, I'm down here at Fort Pierce uh, at what's called uh, A1 Trust. These guys build uh, roof trusses for uh, large home builders. They got me unloaded super fast. What a great group. You see the trailer's completely empty. And I don't know if you can see, but uh, if you look down this aisle, you know, right here, 
there's a production facility. Man, these guys are throwing these roof trusses together like, like that. I mean, it's pretty impressive to watch, but they wouldn't let me go over there and film anything because you know I was definitely going to try it. So I'm just doing my walk around on the truck. I'm going to try to make it back to Jacksonville, about 220 miles, but I'm real tight on time. I might have to PC, which I can legally do because I'm not under a load. I don't even have a load assigned to me yet. I'll probably get that. Tia might call me on the way, but I doubt it. She said loads were short kind of okay with so anyway i'm about to get on the road and get on up here we go i don't want to go in this way well fam got about 225 miles to go um about three and a half hours away don't know if i'm gonna make it up there tonight because if you look at my time i got three hours and 32 minutes of drive time and i'll easily lose 15 minutes of that uh going down the highway it's a straight shot up to Jacksonville, uh, so it ought to go pretty smooth. We'll just see what happens along the way. Here we go. Well, good morning, fam. It's Friday morning, and I am trying to get over to the truck. I got one slight little problem. I'm still in the neighborhood, and I haven't left. The streets are flooded, y'all. We got that nor'easter when you live on the water, it's what you deal with. So, if you look down the street, by the way, that is the street. You can see the house across the street over there. Yeah, we in bad shape, so thank goodness my truck is lifted, so uh, my daughter's in there making me a fried egg sandwich. Gotta have my fried egg sandwich, y'all. But uh, yeah, we're flooded in pretty good right here, and the tide is still coming in, so. You can barely see right down there a little bit of the street that's not covered in water, but it's something we deal with living here in the coastal area. So hopefully I'll get to the yard here in a few minutes and get on down the road. Headed to Baxley today, picking up a load, going somewhere down in Florida. Can't deliver till Monday though, so another easy day. Uh, another easy day for me. So anyway, just thought I'd give y'all an update on what I'm dealing with. Here we go. Well, good afternoon, fam. I kind of had a leisurely drive up here to Baxley. It seems like I go to Baxley a lot, but uh, I'm up here in Baxley. I'm picking up a load of lumber that's going to go down to uh, Wesley Chapel, Florida uh, on Monday. So you can see Inner Fort Baxley over there on the, on the left. And they got a lot of lumber sitting outside here, y'all. Um, I don't know what the deal is, but they certainly have a lot of lumber. I'm not sure if they're shipping a lot, but they sure do have a lot. So I'm going to sneak up in here and uh, get this load. I don't even know if I'm going to strap it down here or uh, go strap it down the road. Oh, look, there's a, there's a little crowd here, fam. Well, that's a good thing. Um, yeah, they had a little rush. There's no one in the back circle, so I'll be able to get in and out pretty quickly. So I'm, I'm gonna just go in here, turn in my numbers and everything, and uh, get this load and head back on down to Jacksonville. Be right back. Well fam, I got the pick order here. Pick order, which is what the, the, that's what they gotta pick, I guess. Bad thing is it's 48 feet which means I'm gonna to have to slide the axles on my truck or go back through the country. I can't go, uh, I can't go straight down the interstate because my rear end might be overweight in Georgia, but in Florida, I'll be okay. So, it doesn't really matter. It's 16 miles closer, but it's like five or six minutes longer to go down uh, through the back roads. But, I won't kill me. I have nothing else to do today, so it's kind of an easy day. So I got to finagle around these trucks right here so I can uh, get in the back. All right. in spot so now I'm gonna go out here and uh, pull my straps down and 
get ready to receive this 48 feet of lumber. I sure wish it was a 40 foot long, but I live. All right, fam. We got this. Uh, got this load on. The uh, the loader is still adjusting it. He still has to tighten up a few cracks in there. So he asked me to just to hold off for a minute before he uh, finished up the load. He said he was going to push it from the back. So I'm going to get out of his way and uh, just let him do what he does uh, to get that load on there the way he wants it. So he's very conscientious because sometimes you get these guys out here and they really don't care how they load your truck. You know, but this guy right here seems to really care about it and have a uh, have some pride about what he's doing. So just thought I'd let y'all know that. And uh, I'm going to get over here and get out of the way. You see the back of the truck there. And uh, you see how he's getting in position to do whatever he's getting ready to do. So anyway, we'll keep tabs on. Not tabs, just keep watching. Now you'll notice right now, he's picking up my tarp. And I sure do appreciate that because I don't have to pick those tarps up and put them on that top level like he can do it. That forklift is a lot stronger than me, y'all. So he'll put the tarps up there. Those guys are usually pretty careful about how they do it. They want to make sure that they're not in the, uh, in the way of where you throw your straps. So he's going to set it up top. Then I think he's going to try to push that, uh, that last lift that way a little bit so it's tighter up on the trailer. But uh, we're almost ready to go after that. I'll sneak back here to the tarping shed and uh, get my tarps on. And once I got the tarps on, I can head on down the road. So take a look at him. So he'll get on there sideways and start just pushing him. So. Yeah, he's pretty good at that, isn't he? Fam, he just gave me the thumbs up. So he's got the load where he wants it. So now I can go ahead and tighten down my strap. Well, before I tighten down the straps, I gotta run this thing, run this thing across the scale. Because this place is notorious for overloading. So I'm gonna run up, go on the scale, see what I weigh, and then I'll back over here and get her tarp and head on back to Jacksonville. Here we go. Well, fam, you can see when they loaded me, they uh all the air pressure in the back uh uh, and, and the tanks in the back went down because they squeeze it all out when they load you. So um, I wait on that to build back up. Shouldn't take, oh, it's already up. So, all right, so I'm going to move up here to the scale. You can see the scale right there. I'm going to jump up on the scale. I'll tell you what, fam, it is dead. I am the only truck here. And on a Friday, that's a little bit scary. It just shows how things are, you know, kind of slowing down this time right before the holidays. So it's what happens in this line of work. So I've got to get some other kind of loads lined up uh, to move around. All right, sneak up on the scale. All right, let me go over here and see what the damage is. So these are the bill of ladings that I got to sign. I got to sign all four copies right here. And uh, they keep two and I go to two. All right, y'all. You can see how I got that back axle uh, positioned on the scale. Now we'll go see how much this thing weighs. So y'all can see we're at 39.3, so I got to spread them. All right, so as y'all saw, I'm at 39,300. Dang. All that means is uh, for me to run legal in Georgia, I got to spread my axles, but there's no scales between here and Florida. Now, Florida, I can be 40,000 pounds. I'm backing off the scale so I can go tarp y'all. Uh, Florida, I can be 40,000. So if I go back roads, uh, I don't have to split the axles. But I, I, try to, I try to do what I do with integrity, and I don't really worry about what other people do I just got to make sure I'm doing the right thing so I'm gonna go ahead and spread my axles I'll tarp first 
uh, I'm gonna take a second to spread the axis, but uh, I'll go on and do that uh, here right after I tarp the load. Yeah, it just never, never fails or never pays. I can't even talk today, y'all. Never pays to be dishonest. That's what I was trying to say. Yeah, never pays to be dishonest. So, and the chances of me getting pulled over by a DOT officer uh, with a portable scale are extremely low. But if my grandson was in here, I'd have to say, son, we have to stop and split the axles because that is the right thing to do. So that's what I'm gonna do. All right, so let me back this thing in the tarpon shed. Hold on a second. just saw got the axle split and you can see that I got the load part so I am getting ready to mosey down oh you guys I just remembered I gotta go by friendlies they got pork chops oh my goodness how could I forget something like that anyway loads ready to go tarp tightened up and uh, I'm about to head to pork chop city catch y'all in a little bit Hey fam, good afternoon. It's uh, Saturday afternoon and I'm getting ready to go to Walmart to get uh, the supplies that I need for the upcoming week. I gotta get, you know, the stuff that I make my food out of and uh, some death for the truck, things like that. But I wanted to say thank you for watching the video. I want, uh, I really appreciate it if you guys would subscribe to the channel. Hey, like it, share it. And if there's anything that you would like to see from a content standpoint, just leave it in the comments down below and I'll make sure that I take care of it. Once again, thanks for watching. Each and every one of you have a great and blessed day. Take care.